it's cold as shit this morning, but we're still getting coffee. And Saturday morning, it was like in the 20s, like 24 this morning. Like, I think it's up to 30 now, but. 33 and flashing. Yeah, it's still stupid cold. So it's still cold as shit, guys. Uh, I don't know if Deb wants to be on video today or not. I don't know. Not I don't really, know. but I will. Hi. <laughs> so, yeah, it's Saturday. Cold as shit. We done, done established that one. Uh, I had to break out the old Bucky's beanie, which needs broke in. It's pretty damn tight. <laughs> she will show you her coffee. Mm, seven birds. <laughs> That's kind of like our treat now because... Uh, for the past, this whole week, like from Monday through yesterday, I basically, and I work eight to five, but I'm working at home. I've already put on a few pounds in the past couple of years, guys. I ain't gonna lie. Your homeboy getting fat. So we decided that with me doing a job where I sit in a chair all day, tattooing forever, <laughs> working at home now, uh, Rejoin the gym. I'm, I'm not doing much, so yeah, we rejoined a gym. No, the gym. <laughs> and, yeah, it's called the gym. Uh, literally, that's the name of the gym. It ain't like a Planet Fitness type shit. It's got like old ass equipment in it, but it actually has actual free weights and stuff. So, you know, it's small. It's 24 hour access. There's no staff. <clears throat> You get hurt in this motherfucker. If you alone in there working out and you get hurt, you there to somebody comes in. <laughs> like another member. It's one of them type of gyms. So After it's, five. Yeah, it's kind of cool though. So literally, guys, as soon as I'm done with work and clock out, we change into gym clothes, go straight to the damn gym. So we've been doing that and uh, getting a little sore. But other than that, I don't really have no good update for y'all. Like, I'm still liking the job. I'm still learning a lot because we have so much different product. Nothing like iced coffee on a cold day. But we have a lot of different product that I'm having to learn. Which brings me kind of to today's video ordeal. There is something cool we can talk about because it's cold as shit outside. I saw a news report where all these people in Chicago were stranded the other day because of the cold front going through and they all had electric cars. Electric cars all run on lithium. Their Teslas wouldn't charge. And yeah, that's not good. <laughs> like people were stranded because their Teslas were dead. They wouldn't charge or nothing because of the cold. And I know a lot of people in the car audio industry are like, how is this lithium going to do in cold weather? It drops a little. Won't lie. You'll drop a little voltage. But let's talk about the difference of why the car audio lithium works in cold ass weather and why uh, Teslas are having problems. One... <sighs> There's, there's a few different chemistries of lithium. Teslas use 18650s. Same batteries that are in my vape. Good batteries. This takes a shit ton of them. But let's just break it down <clears throat> in the easier terms. Like, you know, your Yenlong, Yenlong ain't going to have that much trouble in winter because them are really good cells. Uh, but... A lot of the lithium in cars, let's just use C-Max as an example of what's going on. So, I'm going to use my bank. I have 4S, which means I have four rows of cells connected together in a series. Now, I have 27 cells in each one of them banks, so it's 27 wide. On cold, like it hit last night, you know, like down in the low, low 20s, <coughs> I'm probably going to lose overnight <coughs> at the most, at the most, a half vote. Meaning I would drop from like 16 to 15.5. <coughs> now, electric cars will have a shit ton in a series 
because you know they're getting up over 400 vote but it's only two wide so they have two cells in each one of them banks making that series so when that cold weather drops them it's like a real noticeable drop across the board so it affects it a lot worse only having two cells in the series versus 27 or two cells in each bank versus 27 like when we had the uh, Ford Edge on the C-Max, I didn't notice right any drop hardly at all with it. My black Jeep, I went out a lot of mornings and turned the key on that thing when it has like frost and shit on the windshield. And it might have dropped a tenth overnight. But that's my experience with C-Max. There's so many different cells in these EVs now that it's crazy like there's a lot of cells i'm not familiar with you know i like i know the eh5 is real similar to like c-max proto similar Lipo. uh but there's just like insight cells you know they're they're a little different but i don't know the chemistry of all these and how how they're handling the code so yeah drop a link down or drop a comment down here and let me know if you've got lithium and you live up north or the midwest where it's just been cold as shit what are you noticing for your lithium doing? Because I'd, I'd really like more knowledge in this and just to see what people that are losing voltage, what kind of cells they're running. Like Headway. I wouldn't think that Headway's going to drop real bad because Headway cells are used to jumpstart transformers on electric lines. That's That was the purpose of them, so... Power, needing jump started, it means power is going to go out frequently. That normally happens in colder climates or climates with a lot of storms, you know. But I would think that headway would do all right in cold. And half the country just got slammed with storms, winter storms, yeah. rainstorms, all kinds. Right, so I don't know. I'd, I'd just like to know what you have if you have experienced <clears throat> your lithium dropping like drastically. I'm talking like more than a vote or whatever. Leave a comment and tell us what you're running, what the temp was, and how much it dropped. And here's your sign to charge it if you haven't. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I see a lot of people that have lithium with like blown up banks. I saw one posted, uh, and I, I don't know. I can't remember what group it was. It was a Facebook group. But this guy's, I think it was like a 90 C-Max or something, all blown apart. And... He kind of stated in there that it it dropped his voltage dropped down i guess from sitting and he just started it up with a couple alternators and it blew apart if, if you're not 14 9 or above don't start it trickle charge it with a yeah. scientific charger <laughs> yeah even if we drop into like 15 flat me and dev will break out the charger hook up trickle charge it you know up to like 15 three ish whatever and then just start and let it idle. And I'll make him put a link in his thing for y'all for that battery charger. Oh yeah, I have the trickle charger in my link, link tree. tree. Okay. Yeah, in my Amazon picks. Uh, that thing just works so good. But it takes time. You know, the bigger the bank, and when you're only charging at like five amps, it, it will take a long time. But this guy's bank blew apart. One, because it was compressed with wood. It was not metal compressed. I don't care what all these bank builders out there say. Wood is soft. They're they're doing this shit in this, their backyards or their little shops at home. And they build with wood, which is we've all determined is not safe. Uh, you need compression on certain lithiums. Uh, Jerry's first battery was built with wood. Well, my first battery was built with the pouches, though. Them SIMP... Eights or whatever they are, them are actually really strong cells and they're good cells. And they don't really need compression. They need a little bit of compression, but not much. But anyway, yeah, that was a good bank. Uh, but yeah, lithium. And the reason this guy's bank blew apart, other than the wood compression, is because his voltage dropped pretty low. And he just started the vehicle up with a couple alternators. And I don't know if he tried to drive it or what, but it over overcharged. overcharged really quick. And it wasn't that he was overcharging with high voltage, which we'll get into that, but... Was he playing his system? There's a million factors. No, he probably wasn't with a battery that low. <laughs> but yeah, it blew apart. 
if it would have been compressed, it would have probably done some damage to the cells, but they couldn't have bloomed out like that and blew apart. That's what the compression's for. I mean, like Ford compresses these cells from the factory, you know. But that's the other part is the alternators. Like, and with the LF audio voltmeter that I put in my Jeep, which guys, I have a link to that in my, my link tree also. I can see what my alternator is doing. And even though I got an external voltage regulator on there and I'm set at 16.2, if I just like start my Jeep and let it idle, I'm putting out like over 16. But if you start driving, I've hit 16.5. Like the alternators will be putting out 16.5. So, and especially when it's colder out, like the cold weather really, really plays a big part on that. So, uh, it's nice having that voltmeter where I can see. And I'm not saying buy this voltmeter, guys, because a lot of people, budget ballers, you know, $200 is a big price tag to a lot of people. To a lot of people, it ain't. Let him know. Mama needs that new Elite bass knob, though, oh, from she, LF Audio. She, she wants the wireless bass knob when it comes out. Um... Yeah, I plan on getting one of them too, but... uh, No, I plan on getting one of them. We both plan on getting one of them. But yeah, uh, what I was saying is that meter, it ain't for everybody, you know, but it does let me keep an eye more on my electric and what my alternators are doing. I always had a suspicion that my alternators would charge high depending upon the demand, and that meter just kind of confirmed it looking down and you know you can see your minimum and your maximum voltage and having that secondary uh <coughs> hookup on there where you can monitor a second device is like yeah my alternators are doing 16.5 most commonly like 16.2 to 16.4 ish but they have hit 16.5 so it's really cool to see exactly what's going on and how that plays into everything is when your lithium drops really low Lithium will, it tries to suck power in. And if you do a cold start where your alternator is going to put out more, then that inrush current building that bank back up, it will do damage. Um, but, and it's different when you're playing audio where you got like a constant draw, fill, draw, fill, like when you're demoing and stuff. But generally, even when you're doing that, if you got good electrical, you shouldn't be dropping over. 15.3, you know, that should be like the lowest you drop. And I use that number because after demoing at a show all day, I will be dipping down to 15.3 from 16. Sometimes he'll dip down lower. Don't let him lie but, to you. Well, that was on burps. <laughs> but um, just, you know, it all works together. <coughs> it is it is a big difference when you're you dip down that low and come back because the demand and that's kind of where lithium shines is at that point but when a bank has just dropped down into the 14s your alternators are set to charge at 16 and you start up and you got more than one alternator it is it's it can get bad that's why i always recommend doing a trickle charge but there's ways around this shit also like if you don't have one unplug all your alternators but one start it up and just let that bitch idle you know alternators put out less at idle than they do at 1500 2000 rpm so once you're 15 5 15 6 you want to give it a little gas that's fine yeah but we and that's what we do like we we go out deb don't dry the blazer a whole lot so once twice a week we go out turn the key on see what the voltage is at and just start it and let it idle most of the time it's good. She has let it sit for a couple of weeks before. Toward it dipped into like 14.8 and we did hook it up to the charger. But anyway, cold weather and lithium. I want to know what your experiences are because I have never had a bad experience. And the chemistries that I've ran so far personally, the SIMP whatever 08 uh, pouches, they did great in cold weather. And they're they're a good a good sell bad thing is you have to run them at 16 volt they're 3.7 just like c-max uh they're cheap and affordable now and it's easier to build them than when i built mine 
They actually come with the little cages you put them in now to make it so much easier. Cheap sale is good and affordable. Headway. I had headway in the black Jeep. No big issues with that in cold weather. C-Max. Haven't had problem with that in cold weather. Yinlong. Yinlong did great in cold weather, like in the edge. Oh, yeah. It, like, great, great. I don't think we experienced any drop no matter how cold it got with it. No, with the C-Max, I did not with the, not with the Yinlong. But with all that being said, guys, it don't get that cold here. I mean, it's cold to us. When it gets down in the 20s, that shit is cold to us. But down here, we very seldom ever see anything under 20. I know a lot of you guys live where you're getting like in the negatives and in the single digits. So y'all are the ones I really want to hear from. Like, how's that shit affecting you with them cold ass temperatures? Because Chicago, that's Midwest. I know it gets cold as hell there. I know they have a nasty wind chill. <laughs> they, the windy call it, city. they call it the windy city for a reason. It's always windy. And I've been to Iowa before and that's the coldest place I've ever been in my life. And I know Iowa is going to be a lot like Chicago because I think it was like negative 10 when I was in Iowa, but it was like negative 50 with a wind chill. So them are the temps that Chicago is going to be getting. And I'd imagine that's a whole lot different than what I'm experiencing here with lithium. But anyway, you got anything to add, Deb? No, not really. Y'all <laughs> like my new hair color, though? Ah, uh, okay. Burgundy. <laughs> but, Give opinions. I'll change it. All right, she, she, now she wants opinions on her hair color. So anyway, I guess we got to wrap this shit up. I, like I said, I am enjoying my new job. It's a learning process. Car audio is pretty much all the same, right? And it is to an extent. Products are what makes everything different. And I'm just having to kind of learn like all the power sports products the marine products, Harley products, and, and all that. Because we have some cool shit for different applications that really nobody else is having right now. So that's a learning curve for me. Like I said, the principles are all the same with audio. I'm just having to learn audio with the products at different applications. But yeah, I'm digging working for DS18. Uh, they can work from home too. I ain't even had to get out in the cold at all except for coffee this morning. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. And if you uh, have a seven brews, get a triple seven chiller. Thank me later. <laughs> so um use my links, and I appreciate y'all that have been using my links. But yeah, my my down for sound. I have a big Jeff audio link up there. I don't have links. Don't even try to bash me on that one because you know, the dude did come out and admit that he basically use uh, a program to get all of his subscribers so Look. hell he admitted it but half of my half of my people on here half of y'all want to shop down for sound half y'all want to shop big jeff Look. a link for a discount is a link for a discount an affiliate links an affiliate link guys uh if you want to check out the products from lf audio i have a link in there for that but that just helps me make more videos uh <laughs> But anyway, guys, I appreciate all y'all watching this shit. I'm sorry I don't have a good video of doing car audio shit. One of the things I was going to do is start working on this car. Uh, getting all the wire and everything ran in here so I can get a system together for it. If anybody has free time and you're in the air and you want to help <laughs> build this. When it's warm. We're not doing it when it's 30 degrees out. She will not. She hates the cold. But anyway, that's kind of an update. We'll throw that in here real quick. We're going to slam. We don't know what we're taking. Dustin might have a hookup on a, a diesel truck and a hot shot trailer that'll haul three vehicles. If so, not, we're going to be riding in this. Right. If that falls through, we're going to take the Rogue. I'll have some base to give y'all demos. What we're going to do is we're going to build this thing, get it to where it hair tricks and everything. And, and it did that fine in the edge with an improper box. So we're going to use, build a box for this, did a hair trick with the DB drive stuff. 
and then we're gonna pull everything out and put all DS18 in here for slam. Dry this to slam because I would rather drive 13 hours in this than a 1994 Jeep. It's got <laughs> new shoes, cheap on gas, it's good to go. Right, so it's gonna be a hell of a lot more dependable. And that's gonna allow me a lot more free time to go out and get demos from people, which is really what I wanna go to Slam for because when I go to shows at Jenga Lang, I get a line of people outside wanting to get a demo in Jenga Lang, and I don't get a chance to get out and get many demos. So this would work out great, but either way, we are gonna go to Slamology. We just gotta get this car ready. So if you've watched to the end of the video, you got that news. <laughs> For the people that dipped out early, oh well. At least they watched part of the video, right? But anyway, I'm we trying to hit all the shows, guys. Yeah. And whether I got to take the grocery getter called Blinky or not. <laughs> Blinky. That's right. You did name this car. This Blinky. thing has been named Blinky since the day I got it. So anyway, yeah, that's all we got. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for using my affiliate links. It does help. Uh, and I hope 2024 is great for you guys. What the hell? Peace out, guys. And as always, face on. <laughs>